Hello and welcome to another Hyper Content and Digital Asset Management Service screencast. This time I want to show you how to download and install the system on your web server. First of all, you need to visit www.hypercms.com. Here you will find next to the demo uh, the download, and here you find the latest version of the Hyper Content and Digital Asset Management Server for download. There's also a link to Bitbucket if you want to download the sources from Bitbucket. I recommend we use the direct download from the hypercms.com website. So you just click on it, then you save the compressed zip file to your local hard drive. Since the file has about 45 megabytes, it might take a while. So just wait till the whole file is downloaded. After that, you will uncompress it. You can use your favorite uh, software, like I'm using WinRAR, for instance. So use whatever you like to uncompress the file. So it's done. Now we uncompress the file to our local hard drive. This again might take a while. And after we uncompress the file, first of all, we will read the readme .txt file that gives us some basic information about how to install the system, what are the requirements for installing the system. So I can delete the compressed file now and I open the readme file. And here I get some basic information. So on server side, what do we need? For instance, we need Linux, which is very common, or Apache, and we need a MySQL database, version 5 or higher. Uh, since only the MySQL database is um, supported by the installation script, I strongly recommend that you use MySQL. Of course, you can also use any other ODSBC supported database, but uh, again, the installation script will only support MySQL. For a full digital asset management support, you need optionally the following packages. I won't go into detail. On the client side, you just need a state-of-the-art browser. I'm not telling you any more about this. I think any browser is, is welcome and is supported. And for the installation, yeah, you just copy all the uncompressed files to your web server's root directory where you have access. And then you need to set maybe some uh, file permissions. And then you just access uh, the installation using your standard browser. And after that, you can already use the system. Okay, so let's start. I uh, just want to show you CMS help. There you will find all the different user guides in uh, German and English, but you won't need them for installing the system using the installation script. So let's go back and let's now transfer all our files to our web server. So now you need to open a file transfer software. I'm using here, for instance, uh, WinSCP. It's free, so you can download it from their website, WinSCP. So this can be easily done by just marking all the directories and files and just moving them now to your web server. This, again, can take a while. After all the files are on your web server, it is important that you need to set write permissions for some of the folders. Maybe it's not necessary. It depends on the settings of your web server. So you can also try to just install the system as it is right now. It will give you some error messages telling you that you need to set write permissions. But I'm showing you right now. So what is important? You need to set write permissions on the config folder inside the CMS folder. How can you do that? If you're using WinSCP, the easiest way is you just click on properties and then you need to set, this is already set correctly, but if you don't have write permissions, if the user others has no write permissions, then you need to provide the write permissions. And you should also maybe do this for all the contents in the folder. 
if this is done, the web server user can write into this directory. Okay, what is also important, not only the CMS, also the data, the MIP application and the repository folder needs write permissions. The readme txt file you can delete. I just want to explain you, CMS, this is actually the program code. So this is all the logic. Data stands for the internal data repository. My publication is in uh, the, the first publication we can create, means the first website, the demo website, will be located in my publication. Repository is the external repository, means all the files and uh, some information will be stored here that is required uh, to run the website or to run your system as a digital asset management solution. Okay, so after we set all the permissions, we can now open our uh, web server virtual host where we installed all the files, where we uploaded all the files. And now we'll see the installation form. What is there to do? Of course, we need to provide a username. Admin, by default, it's the super user, so you just need to provide the password. Then you need to provide an email address. The name you can also provide. Then the database host. If you're running it on your local machine, it can be localhost or any other host where your MySQL server is installed. Then a database username the password for the database and a database name. So what should be the name of your database that HyperCMS will use? Uh, we need a valid SMTP host. Okay, what's the operating system? In our case, it's Linux, so this is fine. And now if you have additional software installed, then you can provide the paths to the software. Actually, it should find them automatically, but in case you don't have access, from your virtual host to the uh, software packages, to the uh, different executable files, then it won't show up. So in this case, it's like grayed out text. That means it didn't actually find it. For now, I will just leave it because I wanna mainly use my first publication or this installation as a content management solution to just create my first simple website and I can manage it on my own. There's also another option if you really want to use it mainly or your first publication as a digital asset management solution, then you can select the second option. What is also necessary? You should create two cron jobs, means uh, some tasks that should be executed automatically, like on a daily basis or minutely. So every minute they should be executed. So in order to do this, you need to create two cron jobs later on. Uh, you will find the executable file under CMS job daily PHP or CMS job minutely PHP. So let's start the installation. And if the installation was successful, like it was right now, we will be forwarded directly to the logon page. If some error occurred, you will see the error message like for instance write permission of a certain directory is missing or maybe the, the provided information to access the database was not correct just correct it and press the same button again and if everything uh, works fine you will see this screen and here and can log in using the admin username and the password are provided before and now for the first time I will log into my system and since I installed the first publication as a, a, a content management solution, I should see, it also asks you to access the current location. After the logon, you will see this welcome screen with some basic news about new features of the latest release and it gives you some links to tutorials. I especially recommend the last link to our YouTube channel with different screencasts about the system. Okay, what is here? On our navigation tree we see we can log out, 
Then there's your personal desktop where you can change your password anytime or change your email address, the language. Please don't uncheck the super administrator, otherwise you will have problems with permissions. If you want to go into details about permissions, I recommend you take a look into the user manual uh, for administrators. You also have access when you click, for instance, on the user management here, and then you will have the link to the manual. The same for publication management. Again, you will find the link to the manual here. So if you want to go to details about some features, just open the manual and you will find all the details. Okay, I don't want to go into details about the task management, the checked out items, the publishing queue, or the travel through time. Just check it out on your own. Maybe what is interesting, you can also develop your own plugins. There's also a plugin guide that you can access here if you really feel you want to develop some stuff on your own. But what we should go into detail is now my homepage. This is the first publication the system created for us. And what is interesting here is mainly when you access the assets folder, there you will find the configuration of your website. So you can provide your name, you can provide a slogan, you can upload your logo and provide the uh, reference to the logo. You can provide your email address, which is required for the contact form, the footer name, a footer link, different kind of your uh, social profiles, and it will all show up in your, in your website as soon as you published your changes. So keep in mind, everything you change need to be published before it will show up on your live website. Okay, multimedia was just created for your images. So you can see the thumbnails here. So if you want to upload your own logo, just upload it under assets. You can also create your own folders and upload the assets there. This is up to you. In the pages, you will find now your website that has been created by the system. And when we open the start page, then you see that's your name, your slogan, that you can change anytime in the configuration. And you can also navigate through your website. And if you want, you can now change the title You can edit the text here. I just do some text for to have an example. Of course, you can also create tables. You can do what you want. You can mark the text, make it bold, can insert an image, and so on and so on. And after you're done with your changes, once again, you need to publish it in order to see it on the live website. Also your social profiles, if you defined any, you will see next to the search bar. And also if you want to create new menu items, you can do that anytime. Let's see, we have products, there's no subcategories. You can create anytime new pages here, or you can also create new folders if it's a, like a very uh, vast, big website where you want to have a more detailed structure, you can use folders as well. What is important here for the structure of your navigation, let me open the page once more. And if you click on metadata, you will find uh, two options. First, you can hide a page from the navigation by selecting yes. And you can define a navigation sort order. So if you don't want to sort the navigation alphabetically, which is by default, then you can create your own sort order by providing the numbers for the navigation items here. And you can see again the page title, which is also the navigation title that will be used in the navigation structure. You can also define description and keywords here, which is important for the search engines. So please, do that as well. And if you change anything, please don't forget to publish it. And then also the navigation will be according to the changes you have set.
Okay, so just play around with the website. I think it's quite easy to fill in the content, to change the structure or enhance the structure of your website and just look at it by the preview or the live view so you also see the differences before you publish them. Okay, that's it so far. So just download it, try to install it and play around with it. Take a look at the manuals and maybe you will find time to develop your own templates. The templates you can find here. So page template means those are the templates that are used to build up your website. So you can take a look at these templates. You can also change them if you have a knowledge about HTML, JavaScript and cascading style sheets. Or if you just want to change maybe some colors and you have knowledge about cascading style sheets, you can also take a look at, to, at the template media section and there you will find, for instance, if we search for CSS, you will find the style sheet of your website and here you can do the changes. If, for instance, if you want to change the font size of your website, you can do that here. If you want to change some colors, just experience and experiment with the settings and see what's happening. Okay, that's it so far. So good luck and I hope you will be successful by setting up your first website using HyperCMS. Thank you.